Welcome back everyone to another company of yours to replay cast and this time we're gonna have a good one It's sent in by Earth, so it's obviously a 1v1 It's gonna be on Fameville approach and his enemy is gonna be insane spanky under a pretty good player So one's pretty exciting. I think it's gonna be nice and we have already Some uh, MGs coming out interestingly enough from Earth Obviously on Fameville approach if you do not recall what this map is like house in the center there used to be a house over here but now it's gone and now there's one here that's kind of useful to keep control of the central bp and also some of these strategic points around here especially um a few of the ones that act as uh, the cutoff points such as well obviously this road point and this point as well those are both pretty important to keep and obviously on the right side, house watching over the fuel point. Left side, fuel point being a big open field with a house nearby. Might be flanked around by these Royal, uh, Royal, uh, Royal Engineers? Rear Echelon Troops, it's British? No, it's the Americans. So, just me being very, 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 very stupid. Okay, so, two recommend squads out already from Spanky. And that's going to be pretty nice, because on this map, the map control from two recommend is going to be quite important. Let's just speed up the early game as there's just a couple of engagements going on. MG42 being used to keep control of the fuel point for Earth, but the rear shot troops just move around and get the strategic point on the top, or actually uh, just the bottom left side of the map. Grand Years and Pioneers are going to be exchanging their role in the building, garrisoning it, and trying to provide some pressure on the fuel point for the Americans. Americans also going to be coming in, capturing the central house and trying to capture VP, which would be pretty good. Here comes a very, very good flank on the MG42. MG42 was trying to reach this building, and it's probably going to be able to do that, but it's going to be surrounded on all flanks by German or Americans, so we'll have a very, very hard time actually setting up and doing anything. Second Rifleman Squad going to be able to capture a strategic point near the fuel, and also the fuel is falling under the guise of these rear echelon troops. Rear echelon is going to be instantly suppressed by this MG42, so that's not going to be too good for them. And at the same time, we know that these Grand Years are going to have a fairly, fairly easy time against the Rifleman at long range. However, the problem is when they decide to uh, get out of their cover from the building and get into the open near the, uh, the fuel point, they might come under fire a little bit too much, a little bit more than they would want. In fact, they're already taking pretty big amounts of damage. Rifleman at long range, they're in yellow cover, so they're going to have a pretty easy time defeating them. Hopefully for uh, the Americans. Another push for the Americans is going to be coming in at the cutoff point for uh, Earth. So that's going to cut off the fuel quite easily. Except, well, um, wait, hold on. How is it connected? Oh no, okay, it isn't. It, it wasn't blinking for some reason, so I thought it was connected, but no, it isn't. Very good setup of the MG42. Going to be suppressing these riflemen as soon as they appear in the uh, range. Sending them straight back to the base. Really, really nothing that they could have done there, and that's going to be not that good, because Earth just suppressing them in the base, uh, that's basically the last thing that you want to happen as Americans, is to be pushed into a base like that by something like a suppression unit. However, Earth is floating 360 manpower, or no, he isn't. He's going for the face. No, Flash Mechanized Company already coming up for him. Very, very nice building. Could be very useful if... Um, well, there aren't really that many munitions available. I was thinking about a flame half track to get control of all the houses. But at the same time, a 222 would also be pretty good. A, a Panzer Grandier squad could work in some of the areas on the map, such as the north, but in some areas, such as the center, Panzer Grandiers would be kind of a liability compared to something like a second MG, which is what I thought Earth would have gone for with that excess manpower they had. I think that the MG would have been very useful against the amount of infantry that we see from Insane Spanky. Insane Spanky, interestingly enough, going for the rifle company. So we know what he's going to go for, and Earth knows as well from the flamethrower rear echelon troops. So he's going to have a pretty uh, hard time in the early game before the Sherman start to hit. Very nice rifle grenade, going to wipe out a rifleman squad. That was very, very good because the riflemen were trying to retreat and they got out of the green cover bonus just at the last possible second. That's allowing the rifle grenade to finish them off. In fact, we also uh, know that Earth is going for the Lightning War Doctrine and Instinct Spanky might know as well from the Grand Years with the uh, G43s. I don't know if Earth had another Doctrine that had those G43s available, but if he didn't, then both players know what they're going to be uh, going up against now. Easy 8s against the Tiger in the late game, 
it's going to depend on how well Earth can use his supportive units, such as the Pack 40 AT gun. But if um, Intense Panky can get in some good flanks, then the Tiger's really going to be in a lot of trouble against swarms of those excellent medium tanks. However, it's going to take a while for Insane Spanky to get to that point, so we'll see. Um, another Rifleman squad going to be replacing the one that fell in battle. In fact, Ambulance also going to be replenishing some casualties and some HP. Uh, right now, Earth doesn't look like he has... Uh, no, he's going for a Medic, medic Bunker right now, so he's going to be uh, just straight behind the Americans in the medical department, and that's going to be very important because nobody uh, really wants to lose manpower unnecessarily, and if you don't heal up your troops, that's exactly what you're going to do. As you can see, these Panzer Grandiers are still a little bit bloody from that last engagement, going to be taking casualties that much faster if they didn't have the uh, Medic Bunker back at base to heal them up. Of course, uh, Panzer Grandiers kind of have to stay in the field right now and forego the healing for now because there's a pretty good push coming in from Insane Spanky, going to be flanking the German forces in the north, forcing one of the Grandier squads to retreat, the Vet 2-1 in fact. There's one Vet 2 squad, one Vet 1 squad, and a one Vet 0. Uh, that is compared to the American, only a Vet Rierschlan troop. So that a lot of veterans coming in for the Americans, which could be pretty bad if Earth decides to go for a light vehicle very soon, because that will be uh, essentially, oh, well now he gets a Vet 1 rifle squad with the rifle grenades. But he would have had to face uh, like vehicles without any rifle grenade support, so any snares. And that would have been very, very bad, of course, because the light vehicles would have been just run around. Very nice flame for a burst from the rear echelon troops. Going to be taking out two of those retreating Pants Grandiers who are very low on HP. And right now, the riflemen and rear echelon troops are going to be swarming throughout the western and southern flanks of the map, capturing territory as they go. And right now, the rear echelon troops are um, equipped with a flamethrower and are going to be trying to get into the house. Unfortunately for these Grand Years, they know that against these flamethrower equipped troops, they cannot really go for the building themselves, and so they were forced to retreat. No real option there for them. Well, there was an option. It was to retreat to the uh, actual munitions point and get behind this green cover, trying to do some damage at long range against the enemy approaching troops, but he decided not to do that. And there's a steward coming in from Insane Spanky, so... We'll see whether or not Earth's refusal to go for uh, packs or any other kind of um, unit except these Panzer Grenadiers from Tier 2 is going to be biting him back in the uh, behind. Because we'll see soon enough. I mean, the Steward could be very, very useful against the uh, Panzer Grenadiers without the Panzer Shreks. And it could also be fairly useful against the Grenadiers. But at the same time, remember, it was nerfed last patch. So it's not going to be as devastating as it would have been just a patch ago, and in fact, the MG42 does have the Vet 1 with those armor piercing incendiary rounds, which isn't enough to deal with the Steward entirely, but it is enough to deal some extra damage to it, especially if the Steward is pinned down by a Panzerfaust. Ooh, there goes another squad. I believe that was a rear echelon troop. Yes, indeed it was. So, 60 munitions for the, um, well, 50? Hold on, is it 50 or 60 for the M2 flamethrower? I think it's 60 for the M2 flamethrower, but it might be 50. So that amount of munitions, I'm pretty sure they had a flamethrower. Doesn't really show, but I'm fairly certain that they had a flamethrower, I remember that. So flamethrower and 200 manpower of the squad going down. Here comes a Panzerfaust on the Stuart, not really doing a lot of damage, unfortunately, for the uh, Germans. So Grandiers, I'm not sure what these Grandiers are doing. They're just kind of going to be wasting their own lives staying near that Stuart, because there's absolutely nothing that Germans can do to follow up on this um, on this nice uh, snare on the steward. So the Grand Ears are just going to have to retreat, taking huge damage instead of just retreating earlier and not taking any casualties at all. Uh, Pack is coming on the field for Earth, which is definitely the best decision that he could have made to counter that steward. Uh, Pack is going to be very, very easy to flank with the steward, but uh, unfortunately for Insane Spanky, if uh, Earth can make use of the 60 munitions and get some Teller Mines on the field with this one Pioneer squad, Problem is, he only has one Pioneer Squad, uh, and I think that a second Pioneer Squad at this point might be useful, and he's also using tons of munitions on rifle grenades, so he's not going to have enough munitions for a Teller Mine anytime soon. The Steward just needs to be very careful about Panzerfaust then, and we'll see if he can do that. Remember, Famonville Approach does have quite a few hedges around the map and trees that can block line of sight in a pretty devastating way for vehicles. If the vehicles are not too uh, sort of careful, they can jump into an ambush and get themselves from the frying pan into the fire very, very quickly, and that would not be very good, now would it? Unfortunately, the steward did exactly that and gets out of the house directly into the line of fire of the Pac-40 AT gun. Pac-40 going to be doing some very, very good work against the steward. Very nice play with the rear shell troops getting in the building and preventing 
riflemen in the north dying from the very nice pressure of the Panzer Grenadiers. But yes, this was a good, good usage of the building from the rear soldiers, preventing the Grenadiers from jumping into the house, jumping out from the other side, and Panzer Fausting the steward to finish it off. That is, I think, what Earth was going for with that push with the Grand Years, and that prevented it very nicely with the sacrifice of that rear echelon troop. Almost sacrificed the rear echelon troop. Right now, two Rifflemen are not going to have an easy time against these Grand Years at all, and that's something that um, Earth and Insane Spanking really need to sort of take into account when they're uh, sort of parceling out their forces around the map. Is that the two Grand Years with the G43s are going to absolutely tear through these Rifflemen like they were butter. Um, well, you don't really tear for butter. Um, you're going to tear them like they were cardboard. <laughs> and yeah, it's not going to be good. Even these rear shot troops with the flamethrower, yes, an anti-infantry upgrade, but an anti-infantry upgrade that's not going to be at all sufficient to fight those G43s with the veteran C2. Veteran C2, that's going to give them that nice, 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 nice accuracy bonus. And yet, he was not paying attention to uh, that squad, which is very unfortunate. And right now, um, Insane Spanky has lost two recommend squads, I believe. Maybe free, if I can click on him. If I can click on him, indeed. Uh, yeah, he's lost two rifleman squads and two rifle troops, so that's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of manpower down the drain. 560, 960 manpower down the drain in just 12 minutes. And right now, Earth, I believe, has not lost a single squad uh, since the game's start. So as you can see, um, basically the manpower losses for Earth. While they've been pretty high in terms of models, they haven't been that high in terms of actual full squads, which means that Earth, in general, has a manpower advantage. And here comes the 1v1 between the Captain's last remaining guard and the Grenadier with the Veterans Free. Misses the rifle grenade by a mile and a half. He could have been like a tank and he would have missed that rifle grenade too. Damn. And yeah, that saves them. In fact, I think if he hadn't tried to rifle grenade uh, to get the cheeky kill with the retreat, he could have just shot down the last guard uh, as it was fleeing because, again, veteran C-free, G-43 is not, not anything to be sniffed at now. And yeah, uh, these riflemen also have to retreat. Insane Spanky with 180 munitions could have gone at this point for a weapon rack upgrade. I'm not sure why he did not do that. A couple of BRs on some of his riflemen squads would definitely help in dealing with these very, very, very powerful uh, Grand Year squads. It would have also helped in um, rendering the riflemen a little bit less defenseless against the Grand Years, which would have made their veterancy gain probably a little bit less uh, sort of rampant. As you can see, both of these uh, squads that were at veterancy 2 are now at veterancy 3, and the third squad, which was at vet 0, is now at vet 2 with 11 kills. So a little bit of a tougher fight from the riflemen and the rear strong troops would have definitely helped in uh, keeping these Grand Year squads a little bit more suppressed in their veterancy gain. Second pack is on the field, and that's going to definitely suppress the Stuart very hard. In fact, it's going to suppress it so hard it's going to be oppressing the Stuart back into the base. Very not good uh, for Insane Spanky. He's going to need to find some solution to these two pack guns. Of course, the problem with two pack guns on a map like Famonville, Famonville, as you can see, is very wide and not very... Uh, deep, I guess I could call it. Um, so really, the problem with uh, AT guns is the fact that you need to cover a very large area and the enemy tank could be coming in from multiple different flanks at once uh, and you might not know it because obviously you don't have any uh, line of sight. Relief infantry being um, used by Earth might help with getting line of sight just by getting more squads on the field like Ostrofen. I think, in fact, um, I think that Earth is making kind of a mistake and not staying in the fight with these Grand Years, because if he had, then he would have already lost a couple of Grand Years and gotten out a Ostrupen squad. Remember, um, Ostrupen are going to be coming out every uh, four casualties for uh, normal units. So, the Wehrmacht has a bit of an easier time getting out troops on the field from relief infantry than the Soviets have from rapid conscription. Soviets needing six soldiers to get out a conscript squad. Whereas the Wehrmacht obviously only needs four. So it is really good, especially to use something like these Pioneers in a very aggressive way once you have Relief Infantry popped on. And that would have sort of given him a couple of squads already. And you can get up to three squads of Ostrupen. So he could have filled up his ranks quite nicely. And Ostrupen are not just quite good for uh, remanning crew weapons and using Panzerfaust. They're also very, 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 very good at capturing points. And right now in map control, Earth is somehow suffering. Uh, this is probably because he used 320 plus uh, times 2 uh, manpower, so 640 manpower on packs. 
Pecs aren't exactly the first thing that you think of when you think aggressive pushing and capturing dynamically points around the map. So the defensive investment hasn't really paid off so far for Earth because again, this map is very wide, so you need to be keeping a watch over a very, very wide front, and you might just get yourself um, sort of surrounded in detail and destroyed in detail. Now, Panzer IV trying to overrun these uh, riflemen and get you, catching them with their pants down, but they do retreat. What it is going to patch, catch with its pants down, is the Stuart. Stuart goes down. There is an AT gun coming on the field, 57mm for, uh, for Insane Spanky. Which is going to be very good against the eight, uh, the Panzer IV, but it's not going to be in time, that's for sure. As the Panzer IV continues its rampage down the center. Unfortunately, the um, relief, relief infantry was kind of wasted. 90 uh, manpower for 200 manpower Wolf Trooper, or 90 munitions for 200 manpower Wolf Trooper is really not that good. I mean, it's okay. Uh, it could be worse. Uh, it's a similar trade to the Farsha Mirror Assault. 200 munitions, 250 munitions for 440 manpower of a unit but still he could have had 90 munitions for 600 manpower of Ostrupen which would have been definitely much better I'm sure you agree and in general he's now using some of his pack guns to capture points on the map which is good however here comes a Weiss Phosphorus Barrage from Insane Spanky on the entire concentration of infantry and support weapons that uh, Earth has brought up to the center which is very good except problem for Earth is that he only has one Pioneer Squad, so he's going to have a hard time keeping his Panzer IV healthy and resupplied with everything. So in general, he needs to be getting out a second Pioneer as he's doing right away. Very good job from Earth. I agree completely with this decision because he's not only going to need the Pioneers to capture around the map now, he's also going to need them to prepare the Panzer IV, and having a second squad is going to help with that greatly. In the meantime, Insane Spanky is um, up to the major tech, and so he's going to have those easy 8s available to him right now. Earth must know this, and he's going to have his pack guns prepared. Hopefully, he's trying to replenish them back at base, which is good. He doesn't want his pack guns to be very low on HP, and thus very easy targets for the Riflemen. Here comes the Panzer IV trying to flank these uh, Riflemen, but it runs straight into the 57mm tank guns ambush, and very good rifle grenade from the Riflemen. Going to be slowing it down just enough for the 57mm to get, to get the last killing shot in. And right now, the armor supremacy is going once again from the Germans to the Americans as the uh, Sherman, one of the two kinds of Sherman, is going to be coming out certainly soon enough from Insane Spanky. The problem with Insane Spanky is that, again, he lost all that manpower early on in the game, and right now he's suffering with the manpower because, again, the Americans aren't exactly the easiest faction to keep, or I guess army, to keep their manpower's reserve high with, um, because, again, very high upkeep on their units, very, very high reinforcement cost on their units, sometimes not exactly the best performance for that cost, usually means that in the later stages of the game, especially when you're facing really, really high veteran German squads, you're going to be blading lots of manpower down the drain. Now, the problem for uh, Earth is going to be that, yes, he went for those G43s, which has been very, very good for him so far. But as soon as the Americans need a water, as soon as the Americans start to get out those weapon rack unlock uh, upgrades, and he's gonna have a bit of a hard time dealing with them. Then if he had those MG42s, if he had the MG42s, then there would have pretty much no, been no contest, especially on a map like Famineville that's very very open, can be uh, very beneficial for Grand Years to have LMG42s instead of uh, G43s. Here comes a Bono grenade, bottom grenade on the retreat path of the engineers, but the engineers will be able to retreat quite easily. Tellermine actually on the field for Earth. We'll see if that comes into play later on because there's two rear shot troops for Spanky, and both of them have the flame for upgraded, which might not be the best decision because again, there's a few buildings in Famaville, but it isn't really that prominent of a building map uh, as some others. So I really don't think that the two flame throwers purchased were justified. I think that one of them should have been a Minesweeper. Minesweepers are always very important, and they're always justified to get a Minesweeper just in case, even if you're not seeing your opponent getting mines. Having one just uh, as a precaution is much, much better than having none. Right now, Rifleman also able to do some nice capturing work around the map. What's saving Spanky right now is the fact that he's been so much more dynamic with his map control, his map movements, his harassment than Earth. And really, he has been able to contest lots more of the map than he would have probably deserved to. There goes the Major from, looks like a rifle range from another Grenadier squad. 
So again, more unit losses from Spanky, kind of paying for his aggressive playstyle and his dynamic playstyle, but at the same time keeping himself in the game despite losing a lot of engagements and losing a lot of VPs early on. 358 VPs left for the Germans, again because of all that aggressive movement around the map from Spanky. All over the map, capturing VPs and capturing normal points alike, and that's been saving him a lot of resources and a lot of points. Now, Easy H Sherman is on the field. We'll see if he can transition from such a spread out sort of harassment playstyle into a more uh, sort of concentrated assault playstyle. Utilizing the strength that the M4C, or not M4C, uh, the Easy H Sherman now gives him over the Germans to try to flank these 2AT guns on one decisive push along with the infantry and take them out. There goes another rifleman squad that was in the southern part of the map with these Grenadiers. Very good job from Earth wiping out yet another squad from the Americans. But the Americans are just relentless in their offensive. They're capturing points and forcing the 2AT guns to reposition all the time to avoid get themselves getting captured by the enemy infantry. And this is really, really good if we consider the fact that the Easy 8 is not on the field. Because despite all of the losses that the Americans are incurring, they're still going to be capturing territory and forcing away the enemy from the map. So map control, despite the fact that by rights it should be going to the Germans, it's not going to the Germans. In fact, it's going to be going entirely to the Americans. And right now, if Insane Spanky can make use of this advantage temporarily that he has over the Germans and sort of uh, wait while uh, Earth is kind of trying to rebuild a... Um, we build a force that can deal with the Americans on an even footing, especially uh, thanks to the fact that uh, right now they're kind of confused, etc, etc, etc. If he can do that in this moment, then he's going to have a hard time sort of um, losing again, because he's going to have a bit of an easier position around the map. But really, the problem is, Tableville is a wide map, not a deep map, so the retreat path back to base is not very long. If Earth is pushed away from the map, it's not going to take very long for him to get back into the map with a more coherent approach, a more coherent setup, a more coherent formation, and avoid getting himself surrounded, uh, sort of flanked, and then forced back into the base again. So his superior army composition and uh, force sort of structure, and obviously numbers as well, are going to be a little bit more important than uh, Spanky's sort of temporary map dominance because it's going to be that much easier for Earth to come in back into the map and get some work done than for Spanky to rebuild his forces. So that's what I'm thinking right now is going to happen, especially with the Tiger coming on the field soon enough for Earth. Right now it looks like um, both players are similarly uh, placed in terms of, wow, another Rifleman squad going down. It looks like both players are similarly placed in terms of um, Pop cap, but at the same time, we have to think about the fact that Earth has much more in terms of resource pool uh, as at his disposal right now. He has the Tiger going to be coming on the field soon enough with 10 more fuel and 20 more manpower. So once he spends that, then he's going to have 19 more pop cap and he's going to be well ahead of the Americans in all that. And also, he's wiped out yet another rifleman spot. That's the fifth one, I think. If I can click on. Spanky and get a sight on that fourth one. That's absolutely not acceptable to be honest, especially in a 1v1. You need to be saving up your squads, you need to be upgrading them and making sure that they get veterancy. You don't want to be uh, sort of handing them out to the enemy, you don't want to be not upgrading your troops and wasting your munitions on uh, abilities that sometimes are useful and sometimes aren't. The White Foster's Barrage would be so excellent against the AT guns in one coherent push, but right now, Spanky is never putting up one coherent push, he's never putting all of his eggs in one basket and trying to get a nice flank going on the AT guns, get the White Phosphorus on them, and then use the Easy 8 Sherman to finish off the enemy infantry. He hasn't done that yet, he's just been spreading his forces around the map, capturing points, which to be fair has obviously kept him in the game, but at the same time, now that the Tiger's on the field, I'm not sure that's going to be viable anymore because the Tiger is just going to be able to punch through one of the areas of the map and especially supported by the two AT guns, it's just going to be able to shrug off anything that the Americans can throw at it, and going to be able to push straight up to the base, in fact, and try to murder some units in the spawn. So the base security zone that Spanky had earlier, I don't think really applies to the Tiger anymore, uh, especially when there's no mines on the field. Very interestingly, Earth has decided to push up the Tiger without too much support. Of course, most of the support is on the left side of the map with these two Grenadiers. 
well, I should say on the left side of the Tiger with the two Rainiers and the Panzer Rainiers. Panzer Rainiers are Rainiers that are kind of needed to take out the pack gun for the Americans. Of course, at the same time, on the right side, very nice pressure from the NG42 and the Grenadiers are going to be forcing away these riflemen and trying to um, distract this German EZ8, doing a very good job at it, and also planting down some teller mines while the EZ8 is distracted and while the American guns are not looking. Very good job for Murph because he does not want to get flanked from the north. He's going to cover that flank with mines. Very nice. And also in the center, he can use the Tiger. Why is he not using the Tiger? He needs to be pushing in this Tiger right now. Get that prioritized vehicles off of the Tiger and shoot at these units and deal huge amounts of damage, deal huge amounts of manpower bleed and prevent the Americans from sort of trying to flank the AT gun and taking them out. Now, of course, the two veteran C3 squads are going to be way more than enough to um, deal some damage to the approaching push and in fact takes out one of the rear echelon troops. But if the Tiger had been in that fight and actively fighting against the Americans, they wouldn't have lasted even half this long and they would have done so, so much more. In fact, the prioritized vehicles now finally going down and uh, being taken off. Going to be dealing some damage to the American infantry, but not really nearly enough. As it could have done. Um, right now, Insane Spanky, not sure how he's going to come back into this. I mean, if the Tiger were to just walk into the base, it would win. Like, I think that Earth is being way, way too cautious. Especially considering the fact that he really isn't using his infantry aggressively at all. He could be using his infantry much more aggressively, capturing points around the map, and also trying to scout ahead of the Tiger. Instead, he's using them to try to protect the AT guns a lot, I see. Uh, sometimes pulling back one or two squads to protect the, um, the VPs or one or two points, and then sometimes pulling them back to base to get them peeled up. I think he should have been much, much more aggressive at this stage of the map. He's just allowing Spank enough time to get a second Sherman on the field, which is... Well, if, when you have one Sherman EZ-8, it's going to be very hard to take out the Tiger. But when you have two, that's double the uh, damage output. So it's going to be much easier to actually take out the Tiger. And the Tiger, again, waiting and being very passive in the face of enemy infantry assaults, going to be walking straight into the ambush of the 57mm AT gun because it wasn't fast enough to react. Of course, 57mm not really getting too... Um, getting into too good of a position. There goes an infantry squad, not sure where. Looks like a uh, rifleman squad, or... No, that was a rear echelon squad. Oh no, that was the captain, actually. Indeed, uh, the captain is not alive anymore. But is it because it died earlier, or is it because it died now? I cannot say. Well, some squads just went down for the Americans. Once again, I mean, Spanky is just losing so many squads. Like... <laughs> It's just a battle of losing points against losing squads at this point. Uh, we'll see who wins, but I'm my money's on Earth. If he can get his act together, his courage to just gather up his forces into one push and get into the base, he could win by annihilation at this point. There's nothing that Spanky can do if the Tiger were to just walk into the base. Like, the AT gun would go down very quickly. Very, very quickly from the concentrated fire of these Grand Ears. These Grand Ears have 32 kills. That's a lot. Along with these guys, these have 29, so that's 61 kills. Then these guys have 24, that's 86 kills. 86 kills in total on Grand Year squads. If we count these 33, that's a lot of kills on the German infantry. They're all that free. So they could all just be pushed into one area, destroy the AT gun crew, come in with the Tiger, use the Tiger to destroy the AT gun itself, and then use the pack guns to cover the rear of the Tiger against any kind of Sherman flanks, along with the mines that Earth has been so thoughtfully placing down the map, ignoring the uh, points, maybe even using just one or two of these Ostrupen, uh, popping a relief infantry, using the Ostrupen to try to capture points while you're making your big push to the base. Destroy everything in the base. Just destroy everything. You can destroy the ambulance, you can destroy some squads while the strike to reinforce, you can do, you can destroy even the machine gun emplacements and even the, um, whatchamacallit, the company command post to prevent the enemy from having the, um, the capacity to actually build enemy, sh uh, to build Shermans. You could do so many things with that. Right now, Sherman trying to flank and stri running straight into the pack, this is exactly why the packs are going to be so good to protect flanks. And the Tiger charges in without infantry support and hit, gets hit by the Tiger a lot. Or, not the Red Tiger, but the AT gun a lot. 
fact, Yeti Gun, without even using the discarding Sable rounds, only using Take Aim. Obviously, these two abilities very, very much increasing the effectiveness of the American anti tank gun. After Vet 2 and C1 and 2, they're very, very good. And again, if the, Amer or if the German infantry had been in support instead of just running around the map, it would have been so much, so much easier for this AT gun to go down. Right now, Tiger is still able to deal with the American infantry just easily enough, but at the same time, had there been German support for the Tiger, then that would have been so, so easy for uh, the Tiger to just punch through the AT gun. And right now, Grandiers managing to have to start the side of the map, north side of the map falling to the MG, so at least the triple cap is going to be coming in for Germans, which is a bit of a nice consolation prize. If you're not going to have the um, complete victory with the Tiger, you're at least going to have that under your uh, dominance, at least the VP game. Could be his. At the same time, though, it looks like a bit of a push in the center might be contesting that. Although these Panzer Grenadiers are just so powerful with the Veteran Supreme. Finding the, um, the Weaponless Rifleman. Again, Weaponless Rifleman with all this munitions available to Insane Spanky is absolutely not acceptable at all. I think that really, Insane Spanky's infantry control, while it's been really good for uh, the map control portion of the game, is really what's been sort of keeping him down so much. I mean, if he would have had a little bit of a more coherent uh, strategy with his infantry, instead of just trying to rely on flame for... I think he was trying to rely on the flame for rear echelon troops as an anti-infantry base, which... Uh, ooh, it's bugged. Nice bug textures, or missing textures, I would guess. Yeah, while the flamethrower on the rear echelon is pretty good, it's just not enough, especially on a map like Favenville that has so many big, long-range engagements that can happen, especially in the center and in the south side of the map. Flamethrowers are not going to be uh, at all suited for this kind of engagement, for this kind of warfare. So you're going to have, have, in fact, not even you're going to want, you're going to have... To at least go for BRs, if not M1919 light machine guns. Uh, and I'm not sure if Spanky had an M1919 light machine gun doctrine, but of course, uh, both tactical support and um, infantry would have been decent in this game, especially the tactical support with the Calliopes to deal with the enemy infantry would have been very, very nice. But in general, anything with the M1919s would have been much, 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 much more useful, I think, than the ez 8s As much as I love Rifle Company, and you know what my profile picture on YouTube is, it's a crying Rifleman Company <laughs> guy. So you can know that I like this company, but at the same time, I can recognize its failures, and its failures really is the fact that you just need to get that decisive push in. You need to have your ez 8s and your Rifleman with the... Um, with the support of the M2 flamethrowers, of course, you used to have the ability to get the flamethrowers on the riflemen. Support of the flamethrowers, support of the white phosphorus coming in along with the easy 8s What is really, really good about the Doctrine is that one big decisive push, the one assault that can break the enemy and give you dominance over the map. And Spanky was not really able to set up with that. Uh, he was able to contest the map for a long time because he played so, so well on the map. He always had his riflemen just charging all over, doing all sorts of harassment maneuvers, and being basically uncatchable for Earth, except when they were, and they were instantly wiped. But again, um, despite the fact that sometimes he lost squads, they were wiped, mostly he was able to keep map control. But he wasn't able to get the last big decisive push in, which is really Rifle Company's aim. Whereas something like tactical support is more for the attrition game. For tactical support, you'd kind of want to fight a prolonged battle. You'd kind of want to get targets for your calliopes more and more often. You want to give time to your artillery and to your veteran free riflemen with M1919 line machine guns, the time to work and uh, sort of bleed the enemy dry. Whereas for Lightning War, that's exactly the same objective, and uh, Spanky kind of allowed Lightning War to do that. Uh, Lightning War is not a doctrine that seeks one big decisive engagement. With the Relief Infantry, with the Tiger, uh, that's a very survivable but not spectacularly, singularly powerful as a unit vehicle, um, and also with obviously the fact that you get those veteran C3 grain years with the G43s, Lightning War is much more focused towards the big 
attrition game, and Earth was able to keep the attrition game going, whereas Spanky was not able to break the attrition game. So I think that really the outcome of this game was completely decided by that. Spanky was not able to get the decisive engagement in, and Earth took, just took advantage of it. In general, Wehrmacht is just more suited to an attrition game than uh, the Americans in general, and the Doctrine so choice compounded that into, well, a situation where Spanky, despite his definitely uh, good plays, I mean, he did not play badly, except for all the units that he lost, Despite all that, he could not really compete in the long term with the Germans, and right now the Germans are just slowly choking him, like, not even... It's just, this is a pretty, pretty bad way to lose a game. It's not quick and painless, it's very, very slow and very, very painful. Because look at these Germans, they're just being more and more edged into a corner, bit by bit, and that's just not nice whenever your safe haven is just being reduced more and more and you can't do anything about it. That's just one of the worst feelings you can have in a strategy game. Tiger's still in the center. 20-something kills. No, just 20 kills. So still gonna be uh, very, very effective against enemy infantry. Nice, still at this moment, Spanky sending troops to the right side to harass and uh, Earth not really being able to keep up with the harassment on the left side of the map. Stug being built by Earth to just have something to fill up the pop cap, not really having a good time against the Sherman Easy 8s, but the Tiger finally doing a bit of a push in the center. Uh, now that there's basically nothing there. Easy 8 or yeah, Easy 8 and um, anti tank are gonna be turning around to try to deal with that, but the Easy 8s are gonna walk straight into the Veteran C2 pack. Veteran C2 pack not really using the target weak point, which is very unfortunate because there would have been a very, very good stun on that vehicle crew of the American Sherman which would have probably secured a kill on it, but unfortunately he was not able to do that because he was probably microing up here against these riflemen and these weir echelons. Riflemen just barely escaping back to base, and right now Earth just needs to be focusing his forces on holding two VPs, I think, because he really cannot hold three VPs against Spanky's just insane dance of doom with the riflemen, just always, always moving into one side or the other with his riflemen, Earth cannot keep up with that, so he should focus on keeping one, two, one or two vote points under Earth's control at all times. In fact, finally, Earth going for a second machine gun is definitely going to help with that because, wait, what? He's using them both. He's using them both in the center, which is definitely a mistake. I think he should have used one of them in the north and one of them in the center, uh, because keeping one machine gun for HVP is pretty much securing the fact that a random rifleman harassing is not going to be. Uh, capturing the point unless they make very good usage of the smoke and the grenades but at the same time if an easy 8 comes in then you can bring in your stug and your tiger here comes the push trying to get that last decisive push in one last desperation push now that it's 75 vps are left but one of the shermans already taking a rifle grenade or sorry a panzer faust second sherman taking another panzer faust and right now uh, the flank is gonna be succeeding in getting through the AT gun wall but it's not gonna succeed in getting through with enough speed and momentum left to get into the rear uh, lines of the Germans destroying the Tiger and ending the game in fact the Tiger is gonna be able to destroy one of the Shermans second Sherman is a sending duck for the packs the uh, American pack is veterancy free and is able to do some damage to the Tiger from the rear but the Tiger is going to be uh, now focused directly on the pack now that these two Shermans are just kind of trying to do some damage in the rear. One of the Shermans gets blocked very nicely, body blocked by the Stug Veteran C2. And the two packs going to be able to finish off the Sherman. Stug Veteran C2 also going down to the fire of the Selenium Anti-Tank Gun. At the same time, there's a right side push once again from the Americans trying to harass on the right side, but the Panzer Grenadiers are going to put an end to that with a very, very good rifle gr or bundle grenade. Here comes a normal grenade. Pineapple going to be trying to do some damage on the Panzer Grenadiers, but the Panzer Grenadiers are right free, so they're basically just walking tanks of doom, and so they don't even take any damage. Right now, Sherman trying to um, repair the damage desperately to try to save its own skin, but at the same time, this Tiger has absolutely no opposition left now that two of the Shermans are dead, and the AT gun is. <laughs> pretty much in complete flight back to base and the tiger is going to have the field to himself now sherman is going to be fully repaired and able to probably escape on the road the uh, grief of the tiger trying to avenge its fallen brother of the stug or cousin of the stug but here comes actually a uh stuka close air support with the 200 munition drop of the stuka it's going to be the gg coming in from spanky and the surrender most likely there we go 
already talked about to pretty heavy length as to what I think happened in that game. A little bit of a recap to what Earth was doing because I didn't really talk too much about him. Uh, I think really uh, that second machine gun should have been coming on the field a little bit earlier and it would have saved them a lot of trouble with how um, the riflemen were just running around the map at all times capturing points. I think that some good machine gun placement into one of the two VPs or one of the two fuel points could have helped him keep uh, something that was not the center VP for a little bit longer time. Again, I also think that the Tiger push earlier would have been a, a good decision, supported by the packs and spearheaded by the infantry. Especially considering the fact that relief infantry was used only once this entire game, maybe twice, I think that a little bit more usage of the ability could have been done by Earth, especially considering that he had 180 munitions left by the end of the game when he used the close air support. So he had 400, close to 400 munitions in his bank by the end. So he could have used definitely a little bit more of that, close, uh, both close air support and relief infantry a little bit earlier. One or two of the squads could have been upgraded instead of with G43s with um, MG42s to have a little bit of extra help just in case the Americans were going to go for lots of weapon upgrades on their riflemen. At the same time, I think that this machine gun, this first one, was really nicely used, never fell into the hands of the enemy, even on a map that can sometimes be quite treacherous for support weapons. Also, very good usage of the anti-tank guns. My main gripe with the usage of the anti-tank guns was that he pretty much never used target weak point. If Earth had used that target weak point a little bit more, I think one or two of the Shermans would have met a bit more of an untimely death than they did. At the same time, I think that Earth definitely had a good game plan going and uh, chose the Doctrine accordingly uh, and was able to pretty much carry it through to the end in a very nice manner, which gave them the win. So I want to thank you all for watching. I can't select the Stuka for the life of me. I'm not sure you even can. I hope you enjoyed the cast. I hope you learned something. Tell me in the comments below what you think about the game. And I'll see you soon.